Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science and Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about active cooling chips or air jet or the solid state cooling. So let's dive deep into it. Now before we understand what air jet is solving, we have to understand what exactly is the problem. The problem is at this point in time in our human history as in like in 2020s, we are not limited in terms of our computational horsepower by the engineering, the power delivery, the silicon, none of those. We are heat limited, meaning if you open a competent gaming laptop, it would look like this. And be mindful, it could literally have the same silicon as a flagship GPU, desktop GPU, it will still not perform. Why? Heat. It's not power limited, it's none of those things. It's just the goddamn heat. You look at any modern flagship phone, you see a giant vapor chambers, giant uh, copper bars. Why? Like why? Heat. That's the whole point. Like we can make SOC that are super duper powerful, but we cannot sustain that super duper powerful mode. So any company that are creating what we call a gaming phone, they literally have fans in the mobile phone just so they can keep uh, basically one mobile SOC cool enough. So be mindful, we can make super powerful ICs. We just cannot cool them. So why don't we just put fan all around them? Well, they're big. Can you make fans small? Yes. Does it make sense? No it's very inefficient. So there is an optimum size. You cannot make it smaller than that. If you try to, it will compromise on way too many variables. So they are big, they're loud, and on top of that, they're also very limited. They require a certain type of environment. They require a certain type of vibrational tolerance. Uh, everything's considering the, that goes into their design. They are very, very restrictive puppies, so to say. So can we make more powerful ICs? Absolutely, that's not an issue. It's just that we cannot cool them adequately. That's the biggest limitation. And mobiles, laptops suffer the most. Laptops are kind of hilarious. You can actually have many times, you can have i9 laptop that performs worse than i7, simply because i9 has much bigger power envelope. It drains a lot of power, but the moment it starts to compute, is like, yeah, I'm overheated. So thermally throttles itself. So that's a very serious design limitation of laptop engineering right now. That's why we are not, uh, nobody is so excited about laptops anymore. Simply because they reached a thermal limit. Can You cannot cool it effectively anymore. Especially thin and light, it's just bad. So that's the problem. So what about this air jet? Air jet is the idea that it's a chip. Why they are calling it chip? It's exactly made like a uh, how you have seen the printer head. Like you see the printer cartridge, it has a head. That head is made through lithography. Exact same principle is used. So it's made out of lithography. So it's there. And on top of that, it's not one thing. It's a package deal. So whenever you are looking at this, this is a package deal. It's almost like how you, when you say I need CPU cooler, you by default mean a cold plate that touches the thing, heat pipe that conducts the heat, heat fins that's going to actually uh, give the surface air and a fan. So that's a whole package deal, right? Here is the same thing. It's a package deal. It looks like one thing, but it's a complete package, meaning it's going to sit on something hot. Is going to drain its heat away, then it's going to flow it outwards. Everything has to be done in this, including air filtration. It also has filter integrated into it. So it's a chip. That's the why they keep calling it a chip for heat removal. It's not a fan. You can, you're not supposed to do like this with a USB power hub bank. You cannot. I mean, like it fundamentally won't work. So it's a chip specifically designed for heat removal. Now it's a very thin. That was design element because again, uh, right now their core target is laptops. So laptops have very serious height limitations. So three millimeter is the thickness and it's relatively silent. Can, is it absolutely silent? Hell no, of course it has moving air that itself makes sounds. So it's not absolutely silent. However, it's exponentially more quieter than a fan. That's the whole point of it. And it creates very high air pressure. That's why it can sustain a filter. If you put filter on something like this, laptop coolers is gonna suffocate. But this puppy can handle filter simply because it has ludicrously high pressure, like 1750 Pascals of back pressure. So ludicrously high pressure. And it can actually give you dust resistance. And it also allows your CPU to get hotter. Now, like, wait a minute. Is that a good thing? Well, absolutely. That simply means, let's say you bought a laptop, right? That laptop has normal, uh, you know, fan and this it cannot draw too much power. So it will remain inherently cool because it tries to draw more power, the temperature climbs, it reaches what we call thermal TJ max temperature. It's like, ah, I cannot do. The moment you put that puppy, it can actually cool itself effectively. Now it will drain more power. So it reaches another TJ max, but this TJ max would be at much higher uh, capacity. Basically how much crunching you are doing, number crunching, that would be exponentially higher. 
and many times uh, the laptop's performance suffers worsely simply because of that. So you could boost clock could be three gigahertz and cool down clock basically at TJ max temperature your boost can drop to as low as let's say 1.5 gigahertz. That's a very big jump. That's like bam. So that's why this idea of like having a sustained power window, it's a in you know, that's why they are saying it can increase your hundred percent. Like how the heck it can give you 100%? Your laptop can still do that 100%. It can just do that for small bursty load. It cannot sustain that puppy. So if you have a cooling system that can actually do it, yeah, your laptop is like, bro, I got this. Heck, if you uh, do not need your laptop to be portable, you can just take a laptop, open it up, put a desktop cooling solution on it. It's like, you will be shocked how much power is there. You're like genuinely shocked. It's just because of the goddamn uh, thermal limitation, we cannot like, you know, make the wings come out, so to say. It also allows increased headroom, increased air cooling and it, in the laptop design that they are coming up with, it does not even need vents on the bottom. So you can put it on carpet, it will still work. That's the whole point. And it has filters so your dog hairs and all that jazz will not just magically block it. So that's the whole thing that they are solving. This unit, this is the bigger unit, this is a smaller unit. So if you have a space constraint, you can use this. You can put two of them, four of them or one big of them. That's up to you. So this is the solution here. So how it's doing that? How the heck something that is only three millimeter thick, how the heck it's achieving that? Well, it's utilizing piezoelectric. Uh, I do not know whether you guys have gas lighters, but generally it requires igniter, tuk tuk, we do that, tuk 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 igniter, or uh, you know, your normal uh, propane lighters that you have. That, that also has that piezoelectric thing, meaning you hit it, it creates electricity. Here's the, it can be done in reverse. You put electricity, it vibrates. Exactly like your clock. Your clock has a piezoelectric oscillator, same thing. So they took that, property of some materials to be piezoelectric and engineered things around it to make it work. So what about the vibrations? We are talking about some ultrasonic vibrations here, meaning it's not audible. So that's why inherently it's silent. It's moving a lot of air and it has high speed jet. Now this is the most critical aspect, the high speed jet because the air volume as in like how many liters of air is moving, it's very minuscule, like it's very little. So do not expect like coming out of it. It's like, it's not that. However, it does have very, very high speed, meaning you the vibrating member, uh, membrane, and then it has gent input pad, and the pressure is like bam. Now, why the why the heck it does that? Well, this is there by design so it can break through the boundary layer. Meaning, if you have a let's say cold plate, right, and you are flowing air through it, will it absorb heat? Yes, to some extent, of course, it will absorb heat. But here's the deal: it will not be as much as you would think. Why? Because of what we call boundary layer. So meaning because of friction, you will literally have a scenario where there is an insulation of air itself on top of the thing that you are trying to cool. So that inherently limits you how much you can actually do. But if you have really, really high power air, jet impingement, meaning 90 degree brutal attack to it, now you can push through that uh, boundary layer and you can actually absorb it. Basically, you are not creating a coat around you that is of, uh, you know, insulating air. So it achieves air saturation. This is the critical aspect. It has very low flow, but it does achieve air saturation. What does air saturation mean? Meaning you have processor. Let's say processor is at 90 degrees Celsius. This copper body reaches 90 degrees Celsius. The air that is going in is let's say 45 degrees Celsius. The air that is gonna come out would be 90 degrees Celsius. That's the whole point. They are achieving very high thermal conversion efficiency. Like the hot body is hot. Air is like, I'm gonna take all the heat away or as much as it can sustain itself, which we call saturation. So it absorbs that. Now be mindful, they designed it very early on. It's like, that's a dumb idea to do. Because imagine this way, let's say your CPU is actually that hot and you're cooling it all. But here's the, that exhaust will be painful if it touches your skin. So it does have gaps. Basically the gaps you see, it's by design and it does have a casing around it. So it also kind of mixes ambient air, quote unquote. So the temperature that is actually on the outside, other side that is coming out of here, it's not very hot. They know this, like this is a design image. You do not want like, imagine this way, like, this is on a CPU and this exhaust that is coming out is like 90 degrees Celsius. Yeah, so it is being mixed with other things by design. Can you design a system that does not do that? Yeah, they will not design it for human use. So that's the whole point. It achieves uh, air saturation with very low flow. That's the critical aspect here. You are absorbing way more heat with very little flow of air. So surprisingly high efficiency there. and. Be mindful, piezoelectric, uh, if you want to move them using electricity, that's easy. But if you want to do that efficiently, you have to be in what we call resonance. Exactly the reason why your watch clock can run on tiny battery for years. And if it's a Casio, it can run for freaking 10 years. So 
how do you achieve that you achieve resonance if you fine tune the resonance it's awesome now here's the problem with that resonance changes based on ambient temperature and pressure and all that just basically it has variability into it so this ecosystem you can notice that it has many uh, wires coming out and there's a very good chance it has a some sort of sensing algorithm into the driver circuit that figures it out it's like okay what's happening so they will have frequency that is going from uh, 2300 uh, 23000 hertz to 24000 hertz i do think this number is a bit off maybe the reporter kind of missed one number or something like that but that's the zone that they are talking about so 23 kilohertz to 24 kilohertz is switch sweeping so to say to keep everything in optimum energy uh, you know zone can you like can you just brute force it 24 yes but it will be inefficient so you need that to be tuned it doesn't need feedback it's not like you just put a uh, plus and minus and go that's not how it works and it can be manufactured it is manufactured by utilizing lithography that's why they are calling it chip exactly like how your printer uh, cartridge print head is made so that's what we are talking about that's how they are doing it that's how this thing is working that's why it's called solid state because this membrane is just vibrating in place rather than actually like it's not doing that so what were the economics of the situation well, right now they are in what we classify as low volume production, meaning do not expect to see this anytime soon, as in like as early as 2025. I'm being optimistic here. So do not expect to see in everything that can utilize this to utilize this. Because it is financially viable, that is factually true. However, only for high end and portable computers. For example, if somebody says add $4,000 to $40,000, you can do that. If somebody says add $4,000 to $2,000, no, that's the whole point. So for things that need this sort of horsepower, only they can actually enjoy it, so to say. So high end portable computers, they need that. Now, this is a Zotac's first device that everybody is announcing that they're gonna launch. Now, why this puppy is unique? This is not made for commercial, uh, basically normal consumer use. It can be bought by them, it can be used by them, but that's not the target audience. Target audience is basically people who are running CNC machine in industrial environment, dirty places, which has actual like sawdust and all that jazz. Now, Zotac have made multiple pieces that are specifically fine-tuned for that market. Now, most of the time, they just have a giant block, which is like aluminum passively cooled system. So they are limited, very limited. Like their CPU TDP is like five watts. Here, they are achieving 10 plus watts or maybe even more than that. So the benefit here, which they are betting on is the fact that air filter can survive in the real world and they can achieve much higher throughput without uh, compromising security as in like the system will actually work because we might for CNC machines they do if they are running on external computer they need that computer to work or whatever else you do you need this to be reliable in an industrial environment so you will pay the higher premium so for high-end portable computer this makes sense lithography uh, needs a lot of polish before they can go from like you know few pieces in CES to like hundreds and thousands of pieces it will take time and they're hopeful that their production will follow the Moore's law meaning uh, every month or not month as in like every 18 year cycle or let's say 18 month cycle or two year cycle they should reach a point where it's like hey this puppy is gonna you know cool uh, around 10 watts at 1.5 watts uh, then maybe the next variant would be like for three watts I can cool 70 watts they're like whoa Moore's law. It's like, you know, exponentially getting more powerful. So it may be like, hey, now I'm consuming one watt to remove 10 watts of heat. That would be like twice as more powerful what it is right now. Or it may be like it's even slimmer, even more powerful, even more volume of air. So there are many things that can be done. So will it replace every single fan? Hell no. It's fan has one critical aspect meaning the mass flow advantage can you use this to like you know put it down and have a jet that goes up like a drone no it does not have the airflow it does have the velocity it does not have the mass to do that so fans is here to stay for very long term so do not worry about that would we see that in like, used in ssd uh, no not really like can it be done absolutely it's just that who needs a ssd that is thermal throttling in an external use case scenario the most practical use case where people actually need this sort of horsepower on a regular basis it's a video work where cameras like Blackmagic and Panasonic camera they directly allow you to record on USB-C hard drives or Kfinity cinema camera they also have that so yeah in those sort of scenarios it is that does not overheat so needing this like, I get it like you may be like hey instead of running 4 Gbps what if you run at 6 Gbps it's like does it really make that much difference to increase the cost by that much can be done yes does it make financial sense not really but there are users for it so do not worry about it it's like oh they don't have users no they have users they are going places at this point in time so what can we expect in future well 
we should really wait at this point in time because I have seen their system. I have linked the video down below. Yeah, they are showing the lab, they are doing the testing. And I'm like, sir, real world dust is far more brutal. Why? Well, it has many more things rather than let's say some sort of powder. It also has things. What things? Dead skin cells, things, dandruff. So all those things are very sticky. They coagulate a lot. And if you have seen marketing from all laptop manufacturers, many of the manufacturers like we have the system, it like the fan has the centrifugal dust vein that will allow all the dust to go through there. It's like, nah, bro. <laughs> nah, it does not work that way. So it's one of those things. On paper, everything works. In lab, everything tests out. It's just the real world is like, nah, bro. So you can have like Samsung, everything detail generation is like, yeah, our mobile phone can withstand like, you know, uh, 100,000 opening and closing. You do that 50,000 time in real world is like, nope, I'm out. So I would really urge some caution, some temper of expectation, because I have a feeling, really bad feeling, not about the technology, but about the dust filters. And they do uh, seem to be a bit more mindful about it because they do have a backflow design. Meaning for every few hours, let's say, depending on the control circuitry, it could be like it's going to backflow. Why? So it can clean out the dust filter. How effective that would be? I do not know. But it's, it shows that somebody of them uh, are thinking about is like, hey, we are putting filters everywhere. It's like filters do jam up. Even in an industrial vehicle like, a, you know, giant JCB and all that jazz, you still need to remove the air filters and clean them. So it is something that I would say, I, you know, caution is advice. Now, scaling up could not be as smooth. Like every company thinks like we're going to start this and we're going to scale it up. Yeah, that could be difficult, like truly difficult. So it's there. And sound tuning will take time. Yes, it is quieter than fan, but it is more annoying. Now, it has to become in such a way where it's like sound is tuned. Basically, exactly like how you fine tune a super car. You have to fine tune the, you know, the sound response, so to say, like exactly how Noctua or Corsair, they do that with their fan. It's like noise itself is not, uh, you know, subjective. Like, oh, this much decibel versus this much decibel. It's like, which frequency? Like you are, we as a human are susceptible to certain frequencies more than other frequencies. So if you are in a very clever engineer, you can design a louder thing to be shifted in a frequency where we are not sensitive. And we're like, hey, dude, this fan is quieter. It's like, even though you can show it, hey, dude, this is louder. It's like, it will feel less annoying, less degrading. So it will take some tuning time. I do not expect the Mark 1 products to be like, whoa. I do expect Mark 3 or Mark 4 product to be that. Now, here's the deal. The jet impingement, the fact that you can push through boundary layer, it's not a new concept. It's not something that requires ultrasonic air inducers to do that. Uh, this is a white paper that I found. It, they are experimenting with a, basically a box cooler, quote unquote. And of course, for CPU and all that, they have a, this cage design, which allows the air to behave exactly like that. And this hopefully, Again, go, you can look into the it. Uh, hopefully allows much higher, basically, cooling. And again, if this design reaches its full maturity, you will not have heat sinks, meaning it will be just a plate, a fan. Done. So fan can also do that. So I do truly expect, if this company actually starts to gain market share, I do truly expect Noctua to come out with something like this. A heat sink that you just bolt on your uh, CPU and it's like, I got this. So it can be done. Now, <clears throat> that being said, I would flat out say there is some serious potential here. Like we are talking about something serious. Will it remove all the fans? That's a bit, that's a bit butter masala. Don't worry too much about it. But like, can it really make a difference in laptop in industry? I see, I see some serious potential here. Unless somebody comes up with a better design of this. So there is some serious potential here. So this was my presentation on solid state cooling. Hopefully you have liked it, learn from it. In that case, click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show my extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.